Today on Yester Kitchen, we are going to talk about the history of the brownie and all the many, many roads that led us to the chocolate dessert that we know today. You're going to love it. Let's get started. Hey everyone, I'm Jill and this is Yester Kitchen. If you're new here, welcome. It would be an honor to have you join us as we explore retro history through food. Okay, so it's been a long time coming and today we are talking all about how we got the brownie. And I wanna thank John P for this. John is actually part of my Facebook group and if you're not on there, you should. Tons of wonderful people. We all love retro. We all talk about memories. We all talk about all the foods of the past and we just have a great time and it would be an honor to have you join us. The link right down there. Come on over, we'd love to have you. So John not only requested that I do a brownie episode, but he sent me a recipe for the original brownie. Um, when when I talk about it, you'll see what I mean. But there's just like, there's, there's one here, there's one here, there's one here, there's one here, and all the roads kind of twisted and turned into what is eventually what we know as the brownie. But John sent me a recipe from 1893, and it really is the first brownie dessert that was created. So I'll, I'll explain it all, but that's what we're gonna make today. It is amazing, and let's get started. Okay, so brownies are as all-American as they come. And before I forget, if you wanna celebrate National Chocolate Brownie Day, that would be December 8th. But any time is a great time to make a brownie. So brownies, where did they come from? There was a hotel in Chicago called the Palmer House. It's been around since 1871, and I think the Hilton has bought it since then. But back then, it was just a big, take a look at a couple pictures, a big, grand hotel right in Chicago. And actually, they were pretty cool. They were the very first hotel to have electricity and phones going to every room. First hotel in Chicago going to every room and the first hotel in Chicago with elevators. So, I mean, these were cutting, cutting edge at the time and the opulence was off the chart. So a man named Potter Palmer owned the hotel and his wife's name was Bertha. She was, you gotta see her, take a look. Is she gorgeous? She was a socialite. She was a philanthropist. She was just Miss High Society. So in 1893, the World's Fair was in Chicago and Bertha was the head of the Board of Lady Managers and they were in charge of the Columbian Expedition. This was a huge deal. So she took it very seriously and she requested the pastry chef at the hotel to create some sort of dessert that she can easily put in box lunches that was easily transportable for their meetings. And he came up with probably the first brownie, although it wasn't called a brownie. It was just, I'm, I'm not exactly sure what they called it that's lost in history, but it was a dense chocolate cake. It actually had walnuts on top and apricots on top, straight from 1893, which is the exact recipe we're gonna make today. It is phenomenal. The chef created this dessert and went off to the exposition and the women loved it, loved it so much that they went back and said, can you make it again? And eventually he started making it for the restaurant, the restaurant in the hotel. And people started to notice, they're like, what is this? So that's, you know, how food history happens. One person makes something and then it kind of goes out, but it, it didn't like span out all over the nation. It just kind of became locally popular. So now we're gonna jump to 1896. Fanny Farmer wrote a cookbook, the Boston Cooking School cookbook, in which she did include a recipe for brownies. But it was a molasses cake. But she called it brownies, we think, because first of all, it was brown because of all the molasses. And also, in the late 1800s, there was a series of children's books about little mythical creatures called, guess what? Mm -hmm. Brownies. There's a couple pictures you can see. They're just little cute little forest creatures and all the kids loved them. It was just a very, very popular book series at the time. So that's probably where she got the name, the creatures and the color of the dish. But like I said, they weren't chocolate. They were molasses. They were just called brownies. So, in, so first we have the Palmer House coming in with one road. Now we have Fanny Farmer coming in with another road, but we still have a few more roads to go. So now we're jumping in 1904. Martha Willett Howard wrote a cookbook called Lowney's Cookbook. She actually was Fanny Farmer's like right hand person. She was her understudy. She learned everything from her and she was probably her best student. So in her cookbook, she also added a recipe for brownies, 
but this time she created him as chocolate. So see, we're kind of developing little layers of history, which I love. But the recipe was not just called brownies, it was called banger brownies. And the best guess of why is because we believe that it was created by a housewife who lived in Bangor, Maine. And she actually played with the recipe, added some more eggs, added some more butter, kind of made it a little more dense cake, and it kind of started resembling the brownies that we know and love today. Now, in 1806, our friend Fanny Farmer wrote a second addition to her Boston Cooking School cookbook, which included a recipe for brownies, no banger, just brownies, and it contained chocolate and it very much resembled the brownies we know today. But brownies really didn't become popular in America in the until the 1920s because that's when chocolate was more readily available. And now, who doesn't love brownies? There's a bazillion versions of brownies. Everybody makes it their own. They're so good. Oh, I love them, but we are gonna make the 19, I'm sorry, no, 19, 1893 version that actually John sent me. Thank you again, John. We're gonna make this delicious, delicious version of brownies, which is probably the original brownie without the name. So these brownies are crazy rich, but they're amazing. So here I have my makeshift double boiler because you know, if you have a double boiler, use it. If not, I have just a Dutch oven with just maybe about a quarter of the way filled with water. And on top of it, I know it's a lot of butter. I have four sticks of butter, one pound, count it, one. And I have 14 ounces of chocolate chips. Sometimes chocolate chips come in only a bag of 12 ounces, you'll be fine. So I'm gonna go ahead and wait for this water to heat up and we're gonna mix this all together. I will be right back. Okay, our chocolate and our butter are melting. Take a look, look at, I know, crazy, but don't worry. You are gonna absolutely love this. It's just, it's, this is not a make it every week dish. So make yourself a treat and enjoy it. Um, I will tell you, if you don't have a double boiler and you don't wanna make a makeshift double boiler, you can put it in a pot a very a very thick pot. The reason for the double boiler is so you have a little buffer between your heat and between the chocolate so it doesn't burn and it cooks gently and slowly. But if you really, really insist, it's okay. Just put it on very, very, very low heat and just be patient. All right, I'm gonna just stir this for a few more minutes until it gets all combined. We are almost there. Okay, look at this. It is just gorgeous. I mean, is this, oh, oh. So fabulous. Okay, give me a second. I'm gonna get this off the heat and I'm gonna bring in our flour and our sugar and we are gonna make some brownies. All right, you ready for the next one? Okay, in my happy little mixing bowl, big mixing bowl, I have here one and a half cup sugar and only a half a cup flour. Brownies are dense, we don't need very much. So I'm just gonna go ahead and just blend those two together. And now, we are gonna mix in our chocolate. Oh my goodness. This is, it just, it does. I took a taste, of course I did. And it tastes just as good as it looks. I mean, chocolate and butter, seriously. That chef at the Palmer house, okay, I'm gonna make a joke. Was one smart cookie? I know it's not a cookie, but close enough. We need to mix for about four to five minutes. I know, you can have a hand blender, but they didn't come around until 1922. So I am gonna do what the original chef did. If you really wanna use a hand mixer, low, low, low. And I know they really don't make hand mixers on super, super low anymore. So just go ahead and get some therapy and think good thoughts and play some good music. And we're gonna mix for about five minutes and I will be right back. Okay, it's been five minutes, which really didn't take long at all. I switched hands, I thought Zen thoughts, I actually played a little music goes by like that. The reason you want to mix so long is because you want the sugar to melt, completely dissolve, and you want the chocolate to cool down because we're adding eggs and you don't want scrambled eggs. If you put eggs into something really hot, you're just gonna have breakfast and that would really be bad. So here we go. This is our gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous. Oh, and delicious. <laughs> I took a taste. We are gonna add, the recipe says vanilla without any measurement. So I did a little testing and I decided to add a tablespoon. I know it's a lot, but this is a very dense, dense mixture and it can totally take a tablespoon of vanilla. So in it goes. 
And now we have eight eggs. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And in they go and just start mixing. And now you wanna mix again for just maybe a minute or two so everything is really well combined. So give me a minute or two. Okay, so I've been mixing for about a minute or two and you just, I mean, you can just tell that the mixture just thickens up with the eggs. You just really, really want your eggs well, well incorporated. Yeah, you could beat your eggs in advance, but you don't have to. As you can see, it works out just fine. And now you have, oh my God, an amazing, amazing <laughs> mixture. That is a soon to be an amazing brownie. How am I doing, John? So far so good? Okay, so we are gonna bring in a nine by 12 greased pan and you're gonna pour all this liquid gold right into your pan and make sure that everybody is in the pool. <laughs> you don't wanna miss any of it. By the way, my oven is set to 300, it's very low. But that's what the Palmer House said, and that's what we're doing. One last thing, walnuts. I have a cup and a half of walnuts that you wanna just sprinkle all over the top. And make sure they go everywhere so everybody gets a bite of walnut, no matter what piece you get. And this guy's gonna go into the oven for between 30 and 40 minutes. How you'll know it's done, because if you stick a toothpick in the middle after 40 minutes, it's still gonna come out with, you know, normally you're supposed to stick it in as it comes out clean. This is so rich and gooey, it's not gonna come out clean. So what you wanna do is you wanna see if the edges crisped up, and it's kind of firm in the center. This is a gooey brownie. This is an amazing brownie. This is going in the oven right now. I will see you in about 40 minutes, and we are gonna make our glaze. So I let it go for about 45 minutes. Seriously, a 1970s oven. I'm still getting used to it, but look at this. This is gorgeous. All oh, our walnuts are baked in. The brownies have risen. It is still gooey in the middle. So what I'm gonna do right now is I am gonna take this and put it to the side. We have here, of course, a pan. Unlike, uh, I think we're just gonna kind of crank it up because we want this to boil. Okay, I have one cup of water. To that, I am gonna add one teaspoon of gelatin, which just comes in packets, measured out teaspoon, all ready to go. And I'm just gonna whisk that around. And uh-oh, into our pot it goes, along with one cup of apricot preserves. It's that easy, you're done. Bring it up to a boil and let it boil for two minutes. So we're gonna do that, we'll be right back when it's boiling. Okay, it's been two minutes. As you can see, it's boiling. And I just wanna clarify, don't start your two minutes from when you mix everything together. Let it come up to a boil, then start your two minutes because you want your gelatin, you know, to kind of do its gelatin thing. And if you don't know about Jello, I created a whole Jello series all about it and about where it came from and why and all that stuff. But I digress. Back to our brownies. Take your hot glaze and a little brush and you wanna just start brushing your glaze all over the brownies. And I mean all over, don't worry. You may have a little left over, but you really want it to seep into your brownies and that's why you want your brownies warm. So what I did was I took them out of the oven and then while they're sitting and cooling is when I made the glaze. And I'm gonna finish this and I'll be right back. Okay, so you wanna just keep brushing until you can clearly see that the glaze is starting to pull up. Don't worry, it's gonna seep in. So now you're gonna let your brownies sit somewhere between 30, 45 minutes, and you want all that glaze to just go in there, and then we're gonna cut them, and then we're gonna eat them. 1893, oh yeah, history of the brownie. <laughs> okay, we are finally done, and I forgot to mention, you wanna like let your brownies cool off in the fridge just for maybe about 15, 20 minutes, so your gelatin sets, you know, so it does its gelatin thing. Anyway, take a look, here we go. 1893, the Palmer House brownies, which probably are the first baked brownie without the name or the history. So all paths lead to brownies. And of course we have to cut into it. Now remember, these are gooey. They're not solid brownies but the gelatin oh, and the apricots and the walnuts, oh my God. Okay, here we go. First piece, first piece, first piece. 
Come on, you. We could do this. Everyone work together. <laughs> there it is. Of course, I have to give it a taste. These are gooey. And so good. All that butter, all those eggs, these are rich brownies. This is actually probably too big of a piece. You just want little pieces. They will make everyone happy. Give these brownies a try. Have some history. And everyone you make them for, tell them the history of the brownie. And if you can't remember all the history, just show them this video. <laughs> I'm so happy you came. This has been a long time coming. John, I hope you're happy. I sure am. <laughs> If you would like to explore more dishes from your childhood or just the past, I invite you to subscribe. I release new videos every week. In the meantime, there's some more retro dishes for you. And remember, every dish, even 1893 brownies that were probably the first brownies maybe, have a story. <laughs> I will see you in the next video.